Can he have significant have some of these, you know, he doesn't have the biggest stat line really ever, but some of these little plays that Wynion makes, some of the rebounds late to tip in there at Vanderbilt. I'm happy you brought his name up first. Uh, we just had a staff meeting, and I said to Cal, his energy, his effort, and what he's given us on the floor, just the fight of it, is an example of what we need every player to do. Uh, this kid came here with a bunch of expectations, and it's easy to get lost in what you are and who you are as a player. He's finally getting back to being the player that he is. Um, an energy guy, a tough guy, a rebounding guy. Um, obviously, we like him to make better decisions handling the ball. Um, he has some unforced turnovers at times, but his energy and his fight and his determination to play winning basketball is really good right now. How much would qualities like that be important <clears throat> against a team like South Carolina? One of the things um, that we're trying to do, we're trying to be a great road team, a team that can go on the road and, and fight and get a win. Um, and that starts with guys like winning, that kind of fight. Um, that kind of determination to fight for a rebound, that kind of determination to block a shot at a pivotal time in the game, um, take a charge, uh, dive on a loose ball. When you're playing road games, every little situation on the court, every possession matters. And we need that from more than winning, but he's an example of why we show fam and show the players, the younger guys especially, Look at what he's done. Look at what how he fought to get this offensive rebound, and he was outside of the three-point line. What do you think Nick needs to do to get back on track? Nick Richards is a very good basketball player who has made the pivotal mistake that all young players make and all players that struggle make. They begin to process. They begin to think too much. They begin to have self-doubt. In this game, this is an instinctive game. You have to play off your instincts. He is prepared. He is well trained, more than I could ever tell you. He's in unbelievable shape. Um, he just has to go out and react. Know who he is, know what he is, become a denominator. The basic and the foundation of what Nick Richards is, he has to be a shot blocker. He has to be a guy that can set a ball screen and dive to the rim and catch lobs above the rim, above the square even. He has to be able to guard multiple positions. He has to be able to rebound the ball above the rim. And in order to do that, you have to be the aggressor. You have to be the guy that makes first contact and attack that basketball. Once he gets back to that and reacting, doing that in games, he's going to be fine. We have not lost any faith in him. Um, we believe in him. We just can't afford to leave him out there and try to figure it out, and he continues to make the same mistakes. After the Vandy game, Kevin said that was an easy job he had. He Kevin had Knox, great, great point you brought up. Yesterday, I spent most of the day watching film with the guys while Coach, and Coach Barbie was on the road. And I happened to read some of Kevin's remarks about Nick. And what he said is so true. He is the hardest working player on this team. And he just has to make it translate to games. Once he does that, we're going to be a, a much better team. Kenny, what have you seen from Jared, even as you were working with him individually before he went back into team practice? Um, it's hard because you see him a lot of, in high school, and you don't know what's going to translate and what's not. Uh, but since he's been practicing, his speed is unbelievable. At 6'9", and whatever he weighs, he can really move. His ball handling is exceptional, like an exceptional ball handler. And his ability to make plays for other people, really, really good. He is literally like a point forward. He's tough, he's strong, he's quick, he's good defensively. He rebounds the ball. Um, he's going to add a dimension to this team that's going to enhance what we do when he's ready to play. When's that going to be? We all, we're leaving it up to him. <laughs>
What does that mean? Because I, I would think the coaches would have, you guys almost sound like you're innocent bystanders, have nothing, no say in it. Who is, who is determined? First of all, I think when you talk about a kid that's coming off an injury and getting healthy, there's a mental thing there that he has to get over. Um, it's been a long time since he's played basketball. Um, and he's going to have some aches and pains. He has to be able to practice and get through those aches and pains and feel comfortable. Um, he's getting to that point. I don't know if he's there yet. Coach Cal doesn't know if he's there yet. But I do know that he's getting to the point where he's feeling more comfortable. Uh, hopefully it's soon. Um, it's wrong for adults to force a kid to do anything when they don't feel like they are ready yet. And so, I mean, Coach Cal is never going to do that to a kid. That's not what we do here. He did say, Cal, that uh, he would prefer that he start at home. Yes. Uh, how big of a priority is that, do you think? Uh, a home know. game rather than an away game? I think that depends on Jerry and where he is mentally. I think that depends on how he feels. Um, as he says, I'm a goon, which means I'm a tough dude, I'm a fighter, I'm a warrior. Then it doesn't matter where I start. He, that's out of his mouth. <laughs> Kenny, what do you what do you make of the recent report that there's kind of this upswell at Louisville that maybe you should be the guy to take over that program down the line? You won't believe this. The players didn't even our players didn't even know I went to Louisville. <laughs> no. And when they did find out, they thought I was a football player. <laughs> but, but seriously, um, you know, Louisville changed my life as a young kid coming from Mississippi to be able to be on the national championship team and learn basketball from a Hall of Fame coach. I have love for Louisville. But I have an obligation and love for the University of Kentucky and the guys sitting in this locker room. It's unfair for Coach Padgett, who's doing an unbelievable job at that university, in a tough situation, really tough. There's veteran coaches that can't do what he's doing right now to put together and get that group to believe. And there's going to be some adversity. There's some ups and downs in every season. He's done a great job. It's unfair to him to have any coach mentioned uh, or any situation mentioned other than do the best job for that school right now. They should stay in the moment and try to win as many games as they can. That's the best answer I could give you. Kenny, someday would you like to become a head coach? Of course, definitely. But it's, I have a great job. I'm not in a rush. I'm not taking a bad job. I'm not, I love what I do. I've been blessed to be working with a coach like Coach Cal, who's a good man. I've been blessed to be working with young men that are exceptional young men that are similar to me, dream chasers, that are out trying to do something special. And I don't take that lightly. So when the right time comes, Hopefully it does. If it doesn't, I can live with it. Kenny, South Carolina, I mean, they're, they've struggled offensively, but defensively their numbers are still good. Their physical team get up into you. How can you prepare your freshman to play that kind of team? First of all, I think you hit on something. They're really physical. They're going to try to rough us up. They're going to try to make it hard for guys like Kevin Knox because Kevin has shown a tendency to shy away from contact. Well, Every day in practice, that's why we got Jared Vanderbilt guarding Kevin Knox. Jared, as much as you can, push him, bump him. Be as physical as you can with him. Because when he gets that, and the greatest thing for Kevin Knox is the way he finished that game against Vandy, that's the way he should start every game. That's the way he should play every minute he's on the floor. And then we'll see how good he is. For me personally with Kevin, I like the fact that he missed every three-point shot he taken. I like that because he has 17 points from the free throw line and from tough twos. If you can do that and then you figure out later I'm going to make a couple of threes, you're going to see 20-point games from him. Are you surprised time and time again you mentioned to every player, take it to the goal, take it to the And it takes seven, eight, nine weeks for that to, to sink in. Um, it's funny you bring that up. Winning basketball for Kentucky. At another school, it may be shoot threes, shoot as many threes, and when they go in, great. When they don't go in, we lose. 
Here at Kentucky, we believe in putting pressure on the defense. Cal has done an unbelievable job of teaching, in our opinion, winning basketball. Winning basketball is putting unbelievable pressure on that defense, making them foul, getting tough twos, posting up. They, they trap us, and we make decisions and put, them, put the defense in rotations. Um, that's winning basketball for us. So it may not be pretty. It may not be 33s in a game. But I tell you what, at the end of the day, we win a whole lot of games by being attacking tough players in a tough offensive team. Um, and when I look at the NBA, I look at players, you say you want to be an NBA player? The best players, they're not just living on threes. They're attacking. What do you think Sasha has given you recently, especially that spurt at the end of the first half? Sasha's been really, really good. He's grown up a lot. Uh, he's bringing us unbelievable energy. Uh, he's becoming more secure and not just looking for the ball, wanting to be a jump shot shooter. And Coach Cal has a great motto for him. Every time you look for shots, you miss every shot that you look for. Every time you just play within the offense and set great screens and dive, the ball finds you and you put the ball in the basket. He has to embrace that more. And the more he does it, the more success he'll have. How about Quade and where is he at? Is he practicing? He has not practiced yet. <clears throat> I think he's any day now. Um, I don't even know if he's going to practice today, but I know he's getting close. Um, but he's been watching and observing, and um, hopefully he's seeing a different side of the game that he didn't see from playing that he can watch and see exactly what we were trying to get. What would you want him to see there? It's just how intense it is and how tough you have to be defensively. Um, you know, last game we had 12 straight line drives and turn downs on ball screen. So there was 12 situations where you're standing in front of an offensive player and he straight line drives you to a four basket. It's tough to win. We have to be a tough defensive team that's fighting you for space that's playing between you and the, and the offensive player in the basket and make you make tough twos. Uh, he's learning that. And you said that he thinks Couple South Carolina guys. is going to try to rough you guys up. What, what will you be looking for to tell you they're trying to rough us up and what are you looking for to see how your guys respond? First of all, on rebounding, who's hitting who first? Are they hitting you? Are they attacking you? Are they pushing you under the basket? Well, if that's happening, then they're going to get offensive rebounds. Second thing is, defensively, they're going to try to take you out of offense. They're going to try to rough you up off screens. They're going to try to get up inside of you when you're handling the ball. They're going to deny passes. They're going to play physical. You have to meet every pass. You have to step over the defender. You have to come to the pass, catch it, be strong with the ball, and make good decisions. They're going to collapse on drives, and we better be ready to find good players on the perimeter and make good passes. Are you guys better in those last two late game situations if Quade's out there? Just he's a guy who's going to make free throws, maybe take care of the ball a little better. I think he's done a good job at the end of games of making big shots and making free throws. But to be honest with you, the way Shea Alexander's playing right now, I mean, the kid has been unbelievable. Um, He's been, he's been great. He's been our best player um, by far. <laughs> uh, he's putting unbelievable pressure on the defense. He's living in the lanes. He's making free throws. Um, he's defending. He's filling up the stat sheet. Can't argue with that. Can you, uh, Last question. Cal's been tossed a couple times in South Carolina. Do you and Joel and John, are you ready? to you prepare yourself any differently when you go to South Carolina that you might have Not to take all. over? Not at all. Cal <laughs> told the team after the last game that, you know, Kenny coached the team and we won by 30. And he gave all the credit to Tyler Ewis. And I, I yelled out to him. I said, Cal, don't put me out there with puppies. <laughs> 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 don't put me out there with these puppies. <laughs>